sorry. This is this is way too dirty. Classic. You press 2, automatically hangs up, and then I'll call you back again. Uh, anyway. Hey guys, welcome back. This is um, this is episode 2 of my Flight Simulator series. It's been a while since I made the first one, I know. Been working on other videos, other projects, a lot of other things. Um, uh, lately I've had a little bit of time off and I've been able to catch up on Flight Simulator and get more used to it. But to be honest, you know, I just haven't uh, had a whole lot of time to play on Flight Simulator. So that's part of the reason I've been making Flight Simulator videos. But I think I got my configuration together, so we're just gonna give this a go. I'm gonna tell you right now, not this many people work on the Compton Airport ramp. Well, it's like an airfare or something. All right, anyway, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of the chocks, I'm gonna get rid of the tie downs. But anyway, we're just gonna get right into it. So we're flying the Piper Aero 3 today, and we are flying the Fly Compton Colors. Ah, it's just looking beautiful. Um, this is a replica of a real world airplane uh, paint scheme. Now, this is the Aero 3. And the real one is a Cherokee 140, so huge difference. Um, it has re this one has retractable landing gear, constant speed prop, and uh, a bunch of other things that you know the the original doesn't have. Uh, this one doesn't have a carburetor; it's actually fuel injected. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, I had somebody custom paint the logo on the tail, uh, making it look. Uh, really nice so it it looks very close to the real world counterpart and I, I love it anyway back inside we're gonna get to work so today flying from Compton Airport to Catalina Island um, a flight that I've done in real life many times uh, most recently when I flew with my daughter taking her to Catalina if you haven't seen that video check out the icon in the corner uh, it's a very good video a lot of people like it I, I appreciate the support and, and uh, you guys watching that thank you uh, now we're gonna get to it. Ignore the 483 Sierra Papa logo. That's actually the first airplane I soloed in. This one is actually a Cherokee 33432. Uh, I just need to go into the options and change that. But for the time being, that's just what it's gonna be. So yeah, there you go. That's why. All right. So I do not have an actual checklist. I do need to get a checklist and use that. But for now, I'm just gonna go based off memory since this is flight simulator. But normally I like to have things as realistic as possible. I already cleared the yoke. Uh, I'm going to clear this one as well, just for the time being. Um, I have everything connected with my Honeywell throttle quadrant. And uh, yeah, everything's looking good. So, anywho, mixture full rich. And um, throttle one. Uh, half an inch I believe sometimes it's a quarter of an inch sometimes it's half an inch but I'm gonna go at half an inch on this one alright we're gonna turn the master switch on actually I gotta move the prop lever a little bit so I can get to that master switch usually when I'm in VR I can just look around it but here I can't alright fuel pump on gonna notice the rise in fuel pressure right there very good and then we're gonna bring the mixture back because this is a fuel injected airplane and we're actually gonna start grab my mouse down here and my mixture control at the same time all right right left both and start and we're going to advance the mixture at the same time very good and we're going to adjust the throttle to 1000 rpm because it will go off and start spinning really fast and you don't want to do that especially when there's no oil circulating so bring it to a thousand let the oil circulate we also have oil pressure rising which is good and that's the first thing we check for actually after we start um, throttle to a thousand check the oil pressure or is it check the oil pressure throttle back to a thousand no I'm pretty sure it's the first one uh, okay so while that's warming up, you know, I'm just setting up my flight instruments, making sure everything is good. This airport is 97 feet above sea level, so I'm just going to put it roughly 100 feet, which is fine. 
Uh, let's see, the ball is moving inside the fluid, which is good. Everything is stable. Um, heading matches the compass. Heading indicator matches the compass. And vertical speed is reading zero. Add to the indicator is level and airspeed reads zero. Okay, so all the flight instruments are good. Let's see, uh, uh, oil temperature will slowly rise. Everything looks good there. All right, we're gonna lean the mixture for taxi. And I'm gonna release the parking brake. Wait to my buddy out there. Hey, okay, he's not waving back, whatever. All right, and we're just gonna roll off over here. Now, you notice that twitch that happened just now? When the airplane starts moving, it does that. I don't know why. If anybody has a fix for that, please let me know. Right. Now, of course, if I were in VR, I would be looking left and right, like, continuously to make sure I'm not running into any traffic. Um, but all I have right now is just my hat on the flight simulator yoke. So, and this is the freedom of movement that I have. It's pretty slow compared to real life, so I, I tend to not use it a whole lot. Because it's kind of annoying. I'm going to take it to the run-up area over here. Now you notice that the trees look uh, a little weird, and the buildings look like post zombie apocalypse but it, it, it's all right um, from the air it looks great trust me yeah I think the graphics are pretty good so anyway uh, this is the approximate location of the run up area in real life so I'm just gonna use that what is this guy doing yo maybe I'm not in the right area anyway <laughs> by the way we don't have those at Compton Airport there's no um, super large aircraft that require that okay oh my god I forgot to put on the beacon okay well this is only a second episode guys and I haven't used flight simulator a whole lot so this is still learning learning curve and everything but I should have known that you know in real life of course I would have done it it's a follow the checklist obviously all right mixture for rich let's go ahead and do the run-up parking brake is set um, check the flight it uh, controls real quick so aerons are good Elevator, we can't really see. Rudder, we can't see. But I have freedom of the rudder pedals. They work just fine. All right, I'm going to bring the throttle up to 2,000 RPM. It's usually 18 in Cessnas and 2,000 in Pipers. Do not quote me on that. All right, we're going to start with the Magnetos. I always check the right first. See a slight drop in RPM. Very good. Back to both. Rises back up. Then left. Drop an RPM. Back to both. Boom. That works good. And since this is a constant speed prop equipped airplane, I'm going to check the propeller as well. So I check it three times. One is for RPM drop, which we have. The second is for manifold pressure rise. Now before I do it, the manifold pressure gauge is right here, just so you can see it. And we're going to watch that sucker rise. It's very, very slight. You can almost not see it, but in the, you know, when you're looking close to it, you can. And the third one is going to be an oil pressure drop. Because we do use oil uh, to change the angle of the propeller blade. I'm not going to go into detail about that. Um, it's just a complex airplane kind of thing. All right, so that's good there. There is no carpet in this one. This switch is actually the alternate air switch. So, um, other than that, check the engine gauges, check the ammeter and everything, just make sure everything's good. Uh, suction gauge, all that stuff is good, so it's all fine. All right, we're going to bring it back to idle. Make sure the engine doesn't cut off. Idle check is good. Going back to 1,000. All right, we have our lights on camera and action all right park and brake release let's do this so real life I would say comp the traffic um, Cherokee 33432 is departing runway 25 left for left crosswind departure because this is going to be a crosswind departure Kilo Charlie Pot, Mike traffic Piper November 483 Sierra pocket taking off runway Oh, okay. Okay, so ignore the air, uh, ignore the pilot voice and everything like that. I should have had that turned off. 
pick off. Alright, slowly advance the power to full. Alright, engine gauges are in the green. Airspeed is a lie. This airplane rotates roughly around 70 knots. Here we go. Oh man, I hate that little kick right there. Positive rate, no more run usable runway remaining. Here comes up. All right, 500 feet AGL, which is right here. I'm gonna bring the manifold pressure back to 25. And the prop RPM to 25. Wow. Okay, so she's not gonna shut up. It's like, no, I don't request a damn thing. Just shut up. It's going to be really annoying during this flight. Uh, I apologize in advance. I will figure this out. Um, if you guys know the solution, then please uh, leave a comment letting me know. But in the meantime, I'll explain what's going on. Right now I'm flying over to Goodyear Blimp area, and we're 2,000 feet. We're climbing to 4,500 feet because we are on a, we're more so on a western side of, you know, the, the center line. So that means even thousands plus 500 feet since we're flying VFR. Alright, at this point, fuel pump comes off. Uh, landing light, I'll just leave it on. And we're just going to keep on advancing the throttle to make sure it stays at 25 inches on the manifold pressure. So normally, I would contact Torrance and request uh, transition through their airspace. But in this airplane, we get up to altitude or above 2,400 feet before, before we get to their airspace. So we actually fly above it. So really no need to contact them. I got to get rid of the iPad. Goodbye. Alright, I'm gonna aim it towards Point Magoo. That's gonna be one of my reference points. Wait, did I say Point Magoo? Haha, <laughs> I meant Point Furman. Ah, man. Get it together, Brian. Get your shit together. Alright, airplane is trimmed nicely for the climb. Bring back the mixture a little bit because we are above 3,000 feet. About 3,000 feet, you start leaning the mixture back. Better fuel burn. Alright, for whatever reason, this didn't connect to my fourth flight. Okay, here's 4,500 feet. I'm gonna pitch forward to stop the climb. I'm gonna let the airplane accelerate a little bit. Okay, we're gonna bring the power to 24 on the manifold and then 2400 RPM on the RPM gauge. And of course, trim. Beautiful, that's giving us roughly 120 knots, which is pretty good. All right, so we're just about over point Furman. So my next reference point is two harbors. Two harbors. You see right here, Catalina Island is right out there. This is two harbors right here. There's one harbor on this side, one harbor on the other side. And um, everything dips down to that point right there. So it's surrounded by a mountain. All right, we are heading there. I am going to go ahead and turn on the autopilot. All right, and then heading mode. Let's make sure I point it towards two harbors. Beautiful. Okay, so we can run through a little uh, cruise check here. I'm just going to switch fuel tanks. It's been about 
Uh, ten minutes so far. All right, let's turn the fuel pump on. I'm gonna switch to the right tank. Make sure the fuel pressure is still good. Wait a few seconds, and it's good. Turn the fuel pump off. Verify that it's still good. And there you go. That's how we switch fuel tanks in Piper aircraft. Most aircraft, for that matter. Make sure I'm leaning it out just a little bit more. There we go. All right, guys, we're on a nice, lovely cruise. Um, I'm going to let you enjoy some shots of the airplane from the outside in the meantime. Um, and then I'll get back to you on the descent. Enjoy. Alright guys, welcome back. We are still 4,500 feet. We are very close to two harbors right now. And I got my flight tracker figured out. Uh, apparently there was a setting that I missed inside the um, inside the app. So, anyway, now we have our airplane. It shows us that we're very well on track. And yeah, this is what our flight plan uh, really looks like. So we go to two harbors. We're going to make a turn towards the airport. We're going to enter the traffic pattern at 2,600 feet. It's going to be a right downwind for runway 22. And this looks like a good spot to start our descent anyway, considering we have about 2,000 feet to lose. So, all right, I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. We're going to power back slightly. We'll go ahead and get our fuel pump on. And let's see, we are pretty much even as far as the tanks go. So, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the right. Consider that our fullest tank. And let's see, about between 500 and 1,000 feet per minute will be just fine. I don't like to descend any faster than 1,000 feet per minute in general aviation airplanes. Well, Catalina is looking beautiful today, just like it does in real life. Oh man, another cool thing about this uh, add on aircraft uh, this is made by Just Flight, Just Flight Piper Aero 3. And uh, they made a, they did a really good job on this because if you look, you can see there are scratches and smudges on the window. And they illuminate when the sun shines into it, which is, wow, just incredible. Because if you go back to the beginning of the video, you didn't see that before. I think that's totally cool. So anyway, this is Catalina's procedure to land at the airport. You have to fly over two harbors, or it's the recommended procedure. It's not something you necessarily have to do. But yeah, they definitely recommend that you bring power back a little bit here. Not too far back, because I don't want to get the gear warning. I don't want to extend it just yet. Uh, yeah, so the pr recommended procedure is to fly over two harbors. As you're descending to the traffic pattern altitude at Catalina, make a left turn and you enter the traffic pattern at 2,600 feet. So we have a little bit less than 1,000 feet to go. And I'm gonna start my turn right now. We are approaching the shoreline. We are at the shoreline. And it looks lovely. That looks lovely. Get a little bit of bumps here. And that is realistic, you guys. Uh, we do get random bumps from time to time. Very cool. And you notice that it happened as soon as we got over land. Over the water, it didn't really happen that much. That's because of thermals that come from the surface. Surface heat from the sun. All 
All right, 200 feet to go. All right, here's Catalina's traffic pattern altitude, 2,600 feet. First thing is pitch, and then power. We're gonna increase ever so slightly. And trim, and I just lost 100 feet because I didn't do that fast enough because I'm so busy explaining it. I'm not the best at explaining things as I'm doing them, but I'm, I'm improving. Anyway, we're in flap operating range. I'm gonna go ahead and add the first notch of flaps. Okay, I think that is close enough. I'm gonna go ahead and turn downwind. So I would say Catalina traffic, Cherokee 33432 is entering the right downwind at a 45 degree angle from for runway 22. The reciprocal of 22 is four as in 040, as in that's the heading I'm going to roll out on. Oh, it is really bulky at Catalina today. All right, the airport is right down there. Jeez. All right, I'm going to drop the gear. The landing gear does help us stabilize a little bit. Alright, so before landing checklist, I'm gonna get the mixture full rich. Prop goes full forward smoothly. Okay, and we're about roughly 45 degrees right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my base turn. Second notch of flaps. And we're gonna start a shallow descent here. We are 1,000 feet above the runway surface. Okay, roll out zero for uh, Roll out this heading here. All right, there's the runway. Looking good. We have our second notch of flaps in. Going to get and turn final before we add our last. Now, in Flight Simulator, I don't tend to roll out on my headings too well because, um, like I said, I have to use the hat to move my head around. But it's not too bad today. When I'm flying in VR now, that's a different story. I'm usually spot on. All right, wings level. Looking good. This one approaches between 70 and 80 knots. I'm going at the last notch of flaps. I'm going to do my four-four landing checklist, which is gas on the proper tank, undercarriage, landing gear, which is down three green, mixture is full forward, prop is full forward, and switches are where they need to be. Safety would be seatbelt. Short final runway 22. See, it's nice when I have that thing working like it's supposed to. All right, so I'm a little low right now. I'm going to add some power. So I like to keep it high right here. That turbulence really dipped us down. As you see, we approach Catalina. It's uh, right by the edge of a cliff. So you don't want to be too low when you fly right there. Could be an issue. Okay. All right, runway is made. Power is coming to idle. As we dodge that little tree right there. That tree is not there in real life, by the way. <laughs> Flare it out, let the airspeed bleed off. A little bit of rudder there. These rudders are very sensitive, by the way. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Still configuring the settings on the rudder and everything. At least the braking is good. Alright, we can make this taxiway right here. Do not go into the dirt, Brian. Do not go into the dirt. Okay. And we're clear. I'm gonna stop it right here. Do our little cleanup. Kilo Alpha Victor X-ray traffic Piper November 483 Sierra Papa is clear of the runway. Black 
can't stand that. Anyway. Flaps up. Why'd you say it twice? Why did you say it twice? <sighs> anyway. Alright, I didn't use rudder trim today, but if I did, that would be centered. Uh, mixture. It's going to be lean. And we're going to turn our strobe lights off. Our landing light off. And our fuel pump off. Come across here and make sure everything's good. And that's my little flow checklist right there. Um, go up here as well. That goes to standby. Alright, let's taxi to parking. This would be super fast in real life. Like, um, I'm going way too fast here. Alright, so I do not have Catalina Island scenery as well as it should be. This is just the default stuff. But for default, it, it does look pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and park it right over here. Make sure I don't chop up this guy with the propeller. Alright, we're gonna stop it right there. Set the parking brake. Throttle to a thousand. Now this is uh, one thing I notice a lot of people do not do, which I do in real life. I don't know if it's the best to do on the simulator, but I switched the key to off quickly and then right back up to both. You saw that there was a drop in RPM right there. That means that the all the wires are properly grounded. And if I were to turn the propeller after landing, you know, when it's off, it won't start. You know. All right. Make sure I don't. I'm sorry. Make sure to cut off. Very good. Keys to off. Beacon off, and then I gotta move this out the way. Mastered off. There we go. I would go outside, I would make sure the airplane is tied down and chalked or whatever, and then I would release the parking brake. Alright guys, that was the Piper Arrow 3 from Just Flight, Compton to Catalina. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, not my best work, uh, made a lot of mistakes, and of course the air traffic control thing was really annoying, at least it was to me. I'm going to have that figured out before the next time. Um, and until the next time, uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, please like, subscribe, send it to somebody. You know, just trying to get this stuff out there, man. Trying to motivate people to get out there and fly, and get out there and enjoy life. Even though I'm not really out there, I'm, I'm in here, but you, know, you kind of get the, get the idea. Um, anyway, bye!